Hey everyone, I wanted to do a special little video mainly around embroidery chit chat. So I have a little Christmas theme because it's Christmas themed embroidery that I'll be dabbling with today. I actually finished this one today. I started it last Christmas and hadn't had a chance to finish it then, but I'm glad I was able to finish it right before the, well, we're now very much in the season, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a little reindeer. I didn't have the red nose, but I went ahead and added it to make it a little Rudolph, the red nose reindeer theme. I got this off of Amazon. And I had, well, basically bought a ton of designs and a lot of them are Christmas ones that I had yet to do. So I will do a new Christmas design with you today. They are pre-designed out. They're like, I'll show you in a minute, but like a sketch essentially that you can follow. I did not freehand them. I'd like to think I'm that creative, but I just wouldn't have been able to, uh, I guess after doing this for a while, you probably could freehand your own designs. I'm sure that's not the most difficult thing after some practice, but yeah. This is the design, and I'm just going to set him over here to be moral support when we go ahead and start our new design. So, these are some cute decorations I got out. These are, some of them are actually my grandmother's little items. This is one of her bells. So, I hope you enjoy the little aesthetic today while we embroider. And it's embroidery is basically just like sewing, um, if you can t tell. So you can tell, I mean, don't look too closely. <laughs> I'm, this isn't like perfection. I definitely needed some practice. Um, and I'm not really the most, I guess, clean with my embroidery, but um, it's really fun and calming. You also find it calming. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and grab our items. So we have this design. It's a Merry Christmas wreath. Has a few techniques that I have yet to really practice, but what I like to do is I'll watch like a quick video tutorial if I need help with something, and usually it's like two minutes of finding something on YouTube and I'm able to figure it out. They do um, have the instructions on the back for some of the stitches, but find the videos on, you know, YouTube and everything are really much easier for me to follow often, so yeah. I'm not going to be doing the whole thing today, of course, because that would take forever, but I think I'm going to get started on maybe like a leaf or a flower. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to get started. So first I'm just going to unpack everything. I actually don't really know what this is, 
but I will put it to the side. In the packet, you get the embroidery instructions, which usually looks like a bunch of like directions per area and what color thread to use, how much thread, and what kind of stitch, and then the instructions on the stitches. ribbon. I'm not really sure what the ribbon is for. Maybe it's for you to hang it at the end. You know, when you're all finished, you can hang it up with the ribbon. That's cool. I like that. Okay. And then you obviously get your canvas. And some needles. Or, yeah, I guess they're those on hand. Inside you have all the ribbon. Oh wow. And you can tell um, they have all numbers representing the color. And then these are called, I think they're called skeins. <laughs> I think they're called skein. I don't know. But each um, bundle, like this for example, has singular threads. There's usually about six that make up one. So if you're going to use like two or four, you separate them out accordingly and pull them apart gently. I have a technique where I usually fold my thread for easier sewing and I'll show it what that looks like, but, yeah. Okay. So that's my thread. I'm going to want to keep that handy and nearby. So this is what it looks like. It's obviously a light design. So I'm going to go ahead and set it in the little frame. on the ring. I, if you want to know how to do that, there, I'll link a tutorial or something, but there are so many great tutorials out there. This is not a how-to embroider video necessarily. It's really just showing you a little bit of what I do, and um, I recommend learning from the experts. I am no expert, so if anyone wants to critique me, <laughs> trust me, I know I am an amateur. <laughs> I am not a professional. So, I am going to start with the fishbone stitch that is for these lovely, like, red leaves. What I didn't realize is this feels a bit more advanced, but there's actually shadowing on the leaves that will be different colored thread, like a slightly lighter thread color to kind of highlight the leaves. I'm going to avoid these areas as much as possible and do the highlight later. Um, I think you could really do the highlight first and then the other color, but it's really, I, I don't really care for myself, honestly, so I'm just going to start with like the base color and then do the highlight after. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to start with that. Okay, so I have my string. Um, it says two strands, but what I did for the way I like to do it, I will take one strand and fold it in half. So I've gone ahead and fed the thread through the needle, and now I have like a loop on the other end, which will be very important. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my first stitch. So it's really just going at the very tippy point of the leaf. leaving a little bit at the end and then I'm going to start my stitch or no, I'm not going to teach you guys the stitch because 
once again, this is not a learning video and it's not quite a tutorial. It's just me showing the first bit. Um, and then I have my needle sticking through the hoop so that when I tie it, it knots perfectly. So, and that is how I knot my needle and such. Okay. So now we can get down to business. This is the part where I thought I could continue my embroidery while just giving you some chit chat on life and how things have been going. If you don't know much about me, that's okay. You can just kind of have it on in the background. Which I find sometimes I just like hearing people chat and even if I'm not concentrating the whole time. So. But if you care to listen, thank you very much. So life has just been very busy for me lately and um, I find definitely not able to do as much as I thought I was able to do. So I really wanted to participate in like NaNoWriMo in November and that just wasn't happening. <laughs> With YouTube, my regular job being very busy this time of year, and then my sister getting married early November, it was just all a whirlwind. So I definitely had to prioritize and just do what I had to do. So, I... Obviously, my sister's wedding happened. That was beautiful. It was up in Big Bear, California. It was like a cabin wedding. It was very beautiful and cold. It actually snowed a little bit. Not during the wedding. And what else? Um, yeah, it was just really beautiful. And it, it was only an intimate amount of people because she's actually having a reception party in December, so there's more fun to come. But uh, it was very intimate and lovely, and it was still like a beautiful ceremony. She took photos out in the nature of Big Bear and it was gorgeous and we had like a lovely dinner indoors and we made it really special so there's really not much else to like talk about with that other than I've just really been spending time with family and um, celebrating life events which is really a great privilege with how close my family is is, and I'm very thankful for that. So, yeah. Otherwise, um, it's been, it's been a very busy month trying to manage work, and I think at the same time, um, another kind of big life update. It's not like that big. I've been actually looking to find a dog to have as a family member. In 2020, I actually did adopt a dog. I was working home full time at that point and I felt ready to take on the challenge and responsibility and I've, I've been wanting a dog for like to that point, but didn't really feel ready until 2020. And I guess the, you know, pandemic really helped push me to kind of go after that because I'm also someone who takes a long time to do things. Like I just gen generally take a long time to make decisions and feel comfortable about things. So, <laughs> I'm really weird that way, but I had been wanting a dog forever, for forever, but just didn't feel confident enough until, 
you know, we were in the face of a pandemic and I, I just didn't know if I wanted to wait any longer to kind of go after having a family pet. So, I adopted a dog. We adopted a four month old dog, puppy at that point. So we adopted this dog and it was a puppy and I felt I could take on the responsibility of a puppy even though that is a lot of work. It's, you know, be aware of that. But yeah, it wasn't that training the dog or taking care of a puppy was daunting to me. Um, so that wasn't like the hard part. But what ended up happening was the dog was a breed that um, they were just very energetic and puppies are generally energetic. So that might have been also something to learn from. It was a breed and type of dog that just wasn't right for us. He had some resource guarding issues and behavioral reactiveness. Nothing dangerous, but it was just something I felt. I spent a lot of time, I spent six months trying to train this dog and I mean this dog was not food motivated. He was toy motivated, but it was so difficult. He was just much more complicated than I, I could handle, honestly. And it was so hard for me, like I had a really rough time coming to grips with the reality of the situation that I would have to really seriously consider whether or not I'd had to rehome this dog and or dish out thousands of dollars for like training. And maybe it wouldn't have been that much money. Maybe it all really depends on the people, right? Like, I'm a big believer in like personality matching and I just don't think I did a good job of finding the right dog. So we ended up rehoming him to a great family where he's so much happier. And I think that was the big issue was it wasn't just making ourselves more comfortable with the dog too. Like he wasn't happy with us and I just couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't bear the burden of an, a dog becoming more anxious and more un, um, uncomfortable, you know? This is the part where I have to like go around the highlights. So that was in 2020 and we only had him for six months from like March to I want to say like October or something. We finally found him a home and he went to a good home. So you know that's all behind us in the past but it was really rough for me because I was so ready to have a dog and to finally have one and just be kind of a little nightmare. like. It wasn't enjoyable. I didn't feel like I bonded well with the dog. I feel like he didn't fit well with our lifestyle and I just felt so defeated. So I ended up um, just taking a pause and not looking again. I felt like I needed to heal a little bit. I was very emotional about it. Um, and I just felt like, wow, maybe I'll never have a pet, you know, like maybe this isn't for me. Um, so anyways, now fast forward to now, present day, 2022, or at least the current time being 2022. And I am back at work in the office and realized it would be really difficult to manage a dog in our home without it being very specific to our lifestyle and fitting in and so I really sat down and decided okay what are the criteria of this dog that I really think would fit our life so when we were looking through our criteria um, 
one of the things we decided on was potentially fostering first with the intention of adopting versus jumping straight into adoption, which is kind of like a big commitment off the bat. So, um, fostering is essentially just taking care of a dog from like a foster care or from like a, like a rescue that needs. So yeah, these rescues need fosters, and usually when you think of fosters, you think of something where like a dog has, you know, has puppies on the way, or there's medical issues, which is totally true, but there's also like a lot of dogs that just are really normal and like kind of ready to be adopted, but they just, these rescues can't house all these dogs like shelters can. And even then the shelters are like overflowing so so after my sister's wedding I decided you know what like let me just Let me start putting things into action instead of complaining about not having a dog or being sad I just felt ready to just do something so I decided to apply for some foster um, rescues and I was very specific about what kind of dog I wanted, which seems a little odd when you're fostering, but I did not want to foster a dog that obviously we would not be fit to take care of anyway. So I was like, I'm not going to take a dog if it doesn't fit most of the things that I'm looking for. And of course, we're, our intention is to adopt. So, you know, if we find the dog, we find them, and we'll, however long that takes is, you know, we'll, we'll try it for a couple months, and then if the nothing bites, well, hopefully nothing bites, but you know what I mean. If we don't get a lead on a good dog, then we will re-evaluate. Um, so I applied, and then literally like 24 hours later, the lady from the rescue responded to me. And we went back and forth probably for about a week to determine what dog would be available for me to foster that also fit what we were looking for. And it turned out there was a dog and we ended up fostering this dog only less than a week ago. So we currently have a little foster dog named Chewy. I will insert like a clip of him here or something to show how absolutely adorable he is and he's just the cutest little thing. So I'm really, it's really strange because like he's a completely different experience of a dog than the previous dog we had. I've actually babysat my friend's dog, who is really sweet and loving, so she was really a breath of fresh air, but this dog living with us right now is so completely different than the dog we had had in 2020. Like, he is so chill. All he wants to do is nap because he's an older dog. He is super tiny and manageable so easygoing, loves everyone, is totally not reactive. Like, I haven't heard this dog bark, like, at all. And it's just such a peaceful experience that I'm, like, kind of, like, is this real? I don't know. So, I definitely, um like super excited but I'm like still processing all of this and feeling like a little unsure still about how my day-to-day -day will look like with him in the picture and kind I mean it's only been less than a week I would obviously love to say I would adopt him but I don't want to like totally confirm that that's just because I want to take it seriously and I want to I want to be really a hundred percent sure. Oh no. Okay, I gotta read Okay, I had to re-thread my needle and then I added a new thread because I was running out.
but I was saying, yeah, I'm really glad that, you know, we're taking it slow and it's turning out to be really great so far. Taking care of him is super easy and like fits really well with us and it makes owning a dog incredibly pleasant and so different than the last experience. So I'm really grateful for that. It's going really well. If we end up adopting him, I'm sure I'd let you know. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm... Gosh, I'm definitely feeling like I'm still processing that. It's only been like a week, but that's kind of been my whole life right now. And we just had Thanksgiving. That was great and chill. Um... And we've just been kind of really vegging out. I've been doing my embroidery. I've just been really resting because I just feel kind of exhausted from work and so much else. I've recently, I don't know what it is, but I've just been feeling so much more anxiety. And it's, it's basically like I come home and I'm just so bothered by how unorganized everything is. Like, I've just been having this voracious need to organize and clean, but I just feel like I can't, and I've been ordering a ton of stuff on Amazon to, like, help organize my life. I just feel like there's clutter everywhere, and it's not that bad. Like, honestly, it's just... I, I'm feeling so bothered by it. Like, it really is bothersome to me that I can't keep a clean home 24-7, which is obviously impossible given that I work all the time and, you know, don't want to spend every free night cleaning, but I just feel like the clutter builds up so quickly and it's so... I don't know, disheartening, I guess is the best word to describe it, but I just don't know what to do other than um, what I have been doing is I have taken, I've bought some ashwagandha supplements to see if that will help with my anxiety, and so far I, I feel like it does kind of ease the early day. The last couple days I haven't taken it, but I have felt so much better just by simply being able to be home and clean my house. Like, that alone is helping me so much and feeling so much better because I have, like, the ability to clean except things also get dirty quickly as well. So, um, yeah, and then taking care of a dog has also been an adjustment, I think, to my environment, so just kind of getting used to that. And then, on top of that, I have been feeling guilty for relaxing the last few days because I feel like I should be on, like, a four-day weekend that I've been given, spend all my time either working on, like, YouTube or some kind of creative project, or some kind of, you know, thing like that. Or that I should be going out and about and, like, having, you know, experiences and yada yada yada. But, to be honest, I don't really want to go anywhere because I'm exhausted. And I, it's, like, to the point where I hate putting on makeup some days, most days, because I just, I feel so tired of it. Like, it doesn't feel fun getting dressed up for work, it feels so burdensome and just like I wish I could go natural sometimes, which I know I can, obviously. But it's just, you know, I like to wear makeup. I like to do my hair, so it's just kind of frustrating that it's like every day. It's a lot. And then mix that in with the anxiety and it feels very unmotivating. I'm not like super depressed or anything. Like, I'm definitely really excited and happy and looking forward to the Christmas season and really just trying to soak everything in and decorate, but 
I'm also just like really tired and want to veg out and I feel really guilty for playing video games even though I used to do that so much I feel guilty because I feel like I'm not really producing anything of value to anyone and that is something I need to inwardly look at and you know really try to understand where that's you know why is it that when I'm creating I only feel feelings of value and purpose in that and it doesn't mean like I don't believe you know people watching this video only see my value in that <laughs> or you know people at my job like I get that we all value each other as humans at some degree but what I'm trying to say is I'm not really concerned about how others feel I'm producing value or not, even though I'm sure that plays a part. It's more coming from my own inward satisfaction. Like, why can't I feel okay with myself by just doing this activity like embroidery and feeling good about it? Why can't I feel good about it? Why does my brain, so to speak, only find happiness or satisfaction, I guess would be a better way, in the things that I produce that make me think I'm worthy of value, like making videos because that's very important to me and it's one of the more important things I have going in my life, so I feel like if I'm not spending most of my time on it, then I'm failing myself, and I hate that <laughs> idea. It's not even about failing anyone else, it's about myself, which is a weird thing, like, I don't know how to explain that, but yeah, that's just kind of my headspace. I have been super excited and content, but also anxious and like, feeling like I'm not being as productive, or feeling guilty, or having difficulty enjoying really simple pleasures like reading, watching a TV show, just for fun, and I don't know. It's just one of those things. <laughs> I feel like I used to play video games for like half a day and I would feel totally cool about it, and now it's like I barely spend 30 minutes playing a video game and I feel like time is slipping away. And that's just really sad. It's supposed to be enjoyable entertainment. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely something I need to work on and figure out what's going on in my psyche and all that good stuff. So, I think I'm making some progress here. Oh no. Oh, you know, sometimes this happens. A lot of embroidery is actually detangling. Detangling. <laughs> so just be patient and aware. I'm gonna try and figure this out. All right, I have untangled and I have a new thread now. Finished off my last thread since it was down for the count anyway. Much like untangling a thread, so sometimes we must untangle things in our lives. So you could say um, I am definitely trying to untangle a few mental obstacles that I am facing. Nothing I can't handle, nothing that, you know, I'm not trying to be out here like complaining left and right, but it's just kind of what I'm going through and wanted to just shed light on how, you know, there's so much to be celebratory for and so much excitement and so many fun new things happening, but, you know, our mental health is still something we have different things we're battling. Um, maybe battling is kind of a strong word, but you know, some people are battling and some people are just kind of mucking through it, untangling things and hopefully figuring out some kind of solution. Very excited for Christmas. I'm definitely excited to film more. I think one of the things that I'm is difficult is keeping up with two videos a week, which is understandable um, on my schedule and just the busy holiday season. Of course, I have like things every weekend in December, so um, all good things, of course, but 
there's very little time to invest a lot of time into filming. Um, my goal is to continue doing two videos a week and then evaluate at the end of December, but this is a quick question to anyone who subscribes to me or watches my videos regularly. Whether or not you like two videos a week or maybe you just prefer one video a week, I feel like I get that there's a lot of content out there, especially during Christmas and we're all very busy. Um, I feel like it can be hard to keep up with all the content from all, all our favorite creators, so I never want to be putting out too much, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And I definitely don't think three videos a week is something I'm going to be doing anytime soon, although who knows, but let me know. Do you like two videos a week? Do you prefer one video a week? And what do we think? I don't know. I enjoy putting out more content, definitely. But I also understand I want my audience to enjoy it too. It doesn't really hurt my creativity because I could do one, I could do two, I could do more, but it's just like I don't want to overwhelm anybody. So if you have any feedback, feel free to let me know on the frequency that you like. Um, I will say I'll probably do like some kind of poll later on, but yeah. Anyway, that was that, but yeah. So also excited about some new video ideas either way and really trying to use what I have, like my little embroidery. <laughs> um, this may be an interesting video at the end of the day, but we shall see. So yeah. Um, I don't think I have any other major updates on like how life is going. Like this leaf is really coming along. It's going a lot faster than I thought it would. I'm leaving spaces for the highlight thread that I'll do later. Um, we'll see if I can finish this before Christmas. I think I'm going to continue this hobby because it is relaxing and I want to get back to the things that are relaxing and make a little time for them without feeling like any pressure to make it somehow, I don't know, capitalistic, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just, I want to enjoy things because I want to enjoy them. I don't, I don't need to be producing something in order to enjoy life, I feel, so I want to remind myself of that more often. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So December is going to be busy, but really festive. I'm looking forward to that. Figuring out how to foster a dog and our little busy life we have, but it's also a very chill life. Like, we like to chill, and I'm excited to um, get presents this year. Last December was really rough. We had a family member die, um, my mother-in-law, and it was just a really hard time, so a really hard December. And we ended up not doing gifts last December because we had bought Disneyland passes and also had bought a car because we needed a car. So we were like, yeah, we're not going to do Christmas gifts because we had already spent so much money and the Disney passes were like our Christmas gift. And then I had decided on top of that to not get a tree and because we do real trees, I don't have storage for fake one anyway, but I prefer real ones. I didn't do a tree. We didn't do presents, and it was just like the saddest Christmas ever. I know this is going to sound like kind of strange, but I really want the the Christmas gifts this year. Like, I really, we set a budget for ourselves. Like, we're responsible. I'm not asking for like, we're just not that kind of people. But I want gifts, and I want to like open presents, and there's just something about that aspect of Christmas and having a tree and, of course, spending time with the family. I'm excited to go see um, the Nutcracker Ballet locally. 
I just, I decided that, that I want to enjoy this Christmas the way I did last year. And that does involve, um, experiences and gifts in my personal experience. And it's just been so fun making a Christmas list. I feel like there's so many things I know I want and it's so strange to like feel that way and just having a lot of things that I want and I think it's because I just haven't, I haven't really spent a lot of time caring for myself in like a materialistic way like yes I buy what I need but I feel like I get so stressed about, out about finances so it's really nice to like have a set of finances just for fun and also for things that I really want and not feel like guilty about it. That guilt factor really plays a part in all of this. So definitely learning to enjoy the season. Yeah, it's not really about the gifts, of course, but to me right now, like, I don't know if that's like a weird thing to say, but it's kind of about the traditional Christmas presents and just the experience of that. Like, yeah, you can buy anything any day, but just the experience of opening gifts that I know I could get myself at any point in time, honestly. But for other people, it's just, I don't know, I, I'm a gift giver. I like getting gifts for people. I'm very thoughtful. I'm intentional. And I think I just enjoy also receiving that as well. I don't know that that's my primary love language. I think acts of services, so I feel like it's very closely tied with gifts, right? It's very tied with having someone, obviously me giving a Christmas list, but then taking the time and effort to like get those things for me is truly something I'm grateful for. And I don't know, it's just, it's a weird thing. I know experiences are also important, but I don't know, sometimes I just want like a ton of good books, maybe a video game, just fun relaxing things to enjoy for Christmas versus like big experiences. <laughs> like just enjoying, enjoying some like simple pleasures, you know. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's, that's my headspace for Christmas right now. So, um, however you decide to celebrate the holidays, I hope either way that it is relaxing, enjoyable, comforting, and, uh, yeah, I think spend it with those you love, but also, you know, if you need to spend it by yourself, sometimes our own company is the best. I love my own company. I love my own space. I'm constantly listening to ASMR like 24-7. Like anytime I'm doing something, I'm listening to ASMR. Washing dishes, doing my makeup, doing embroidery. Like I am on it. If you prefer your own company or audiobooks or ASMR, I mean go for it. This season can be full of stress and overwhelm and I just don't think everyone needs to be like going out and doing crazy things all the time or expensive things either. Like sometimes we did this last year but we just went in our car, got McDonald's ice cream <laughs> and fries or something. Just like little snacks and we drove around the neighborhood finding Christmas lights like super inexpensive and yet also really just simple and you know you're not in a huge crowd of people and I feel like a lot of us are still adjusting to social life and not really ready to like be around a lot of people. I say this because I'm actually going to a concert for the 1975 on Monday, this coming Monday, which we, this will have passed, I think. I'm so anxious about being around so many people. And it's not because of like, it's just being around a lot of people. 
like it's just so overwhelming to me now and I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun I know what outfit I'm gonna wear I know I'm gonna feel really good I'm gonna be with my husband so I'm gonna have a lot of fun it is all the way in LA so I'm a little like annoyed by how far out it will be and it's on a Monday of all days so we do have work um, but we are arranging to make it happen so yeah I think this might be the last concert I ever do on a Monday though I just don't think I'm ever going to do that again. It's too much for me. I'm too old now. Um, which, speaking of which, my birthday is like in a week. It's December 4th. So, I'm a little Christmas babe, a Sagittarius. Um, yeah, I'm excited, except I have no idea how I want to celebrate it. So, all I know is I want it to be relaxing. And I want it to be calm and... I want to basically treat this whole month like my birthday. Like it's just a whole month to enjoy different things that aren't necessarily on the day of my birth. So we'll see how I celebrate, but I'll be turning 29, which I feel like I've been already been 29 this whole year, to be honest, but I am in my last year of my 20s and I'm going to enjoy that for what it is and there's a big thing I'm hoping to do in December which maybe I'll update on but uh, all that to say I look forward to spending this season with you and I hope whatever season you're in that you are feeling loved and safe and at peace and if that is not the case, then I really hope and wish for that uh, for you. And that it comes very soon. I'm gonna end the video here because, you know, it'll take me a while to finish this. But who knows, maybe I'll come back and do another one. But thank you either way for coming along with me to start my new Christmas embroidery. And I hope you enjoy my little Christmas decor. And I appreciate you guys and for watching and for being here. And I hope this brought you some comfort. With that, I will bid you adieu, <laughs> and I hope to see you in the next video.